plus to go into business. It's 28 minutes right after 9 in the a.m. Of course, it's the mid-morning show right here. Why? 107.9 FM. And I told you guys earlier on that today's Vitamin Y is going to have a different twist. Of course, shouts going out to Kitty Pack for holding us down on this particular one. It's a holiday. Now, joining me in the studio today is a man who is uh, a great man, if you ask me. Like, I can describe him with just a few words. Uh, he is... Uh, a man of motivation. His life alone is motivation to a lot of people, including myself. He was born somewhere around uh, 1972, 22nd day of August. He's a business consultant, security expert, and motivational speaker as well. Uh, King is the president of Ubon King Foundation, a non-profit, non-governmental organization targeted at training young people towards leadership. Now, he's a former chairman of the American Society of Industrial Security, that is ASIS, uh, International Chapter 202, in Lagos, Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, join me as you welcome the one and only Ubon King to the Mid Morning Radio Show, man. Good to have you around. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Good to have you around, sir. Privilege here. Um, how long have you been in Ghana this this season? Ah, Charlie, I've been here for like three days now. Three days? Yes. And are you having fun? Yeah, too much fun. Too have much fun. Have you tried out, Have you tried out your I've yet? done that. I've been here for like um, six years, so six I know my way around. <laughs> <laughs> so, you and I had a conversation about. Um, having a, a quick pep talk on how to, you know, elevate ourselves from level one to level 200, like the ideal personalities we're supposed to be as human beings. Mm. I'm going to start off, of course, by, you know, asking you how you um, see young people of our time now. Okay, hi. First of all, let me say thank you for the opportunity to be in YFM 107.9. I think this is the station to be in. Mm -hmm. yes, and um, I think Africans are very satisfied with where they are. Mm. So because of that, there's no aspiration to do more, to gain more. And because we are limited in our thinking, and it's, a lot of them is tied down to one thing in Africa value, and that is family. Mm. We're too family-oriented. So even if somebody's not progressing, we feed him. Yeah. Now, when you feed somebody too much, you stop the person from thinking. Mm. And I think the first problem we have in Africa is free food. Wow. Free food, free food. Yes, because when somebody wakes up who is 25, 30 years old, uh, so the, the mother will give him banku and kenke. In the morning, yeah. he takes some plantain and some beans and uh, he will take it with some kunu or whatever. And maybe a dose, a dose of bokina and uh, swallow That's everything. Yeah, yeah. Then when he swallows that, he sleeps, wakes up around 11, is watching Telemundo Z World, anything on cable TV. Then by two, he's taking four wraps of fufu and taking it with granite soup, you know, with meat and fish all over. Mm. So he's excited. He that, yes, he will sleep and wake up by four, watch Arsenal, watch Man U, watch West Ham. He knows everything mm. about complete football, but doesn't know anything about his complete life. Not to know anything about his complete life. So by 6 p.m., he's eating whatever is available, goes out. After four years, there's nothing. Mm. And every day, there is something that we need to do. If a child is one year old and cannot walk, they say there's a problem. Yeah. So if we know that that child is supposed to be productive, supposed to move at one year old, I don't understand why a 20-year-old man is depending on his father for money. You need to be hungry, you need to be progressive, you need to be strong. We have overfed African youth to the point that their laziness has become destructive. Mm. Now, if a 20-year-old boy is still in his father's house, it's a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. Because at the age of 17, 18, you can be enrolled and enlisted in Ghanaian Navy, Army, or immigration. Yes. Yeah. Now, if you want to enroll, you don't need approval from your father or your mother. Now, interesting to note that they will train you, they will beat the nonsense out of you, and then kit you up with Ghanaian outfit, Ghanaian military or paramilitary outfit, and send you on post into different paths from the age of 18. So if Ghanaian government can trust you to defend Ghana at territorial position at the age of 18 and 19, please Somebody needs to explain to me why you are still at home, not thinking on how to learn to succeed at the age of 19, 20. Now, with all this one, when I always tell people that when a young man is like soft concrete, yes. it can be molded. Exactly. But it's once it gets dry, mm -hmm. you need to break it. So when people get to 30, 35, 40, their brains are set. And if you begin to talk that they need to challenge themselves and move forward, what do they do? They begin to criticize, begin to criticize, begin to criticize. Why should I, why should the first thing I hear in the morning is about problem in this part, problem in this part? No, no, no. I should wake up with something healthy. 
I stay healthy. I don't listen to negative news. I stopped it. Now, it is a challenge for a lot of African youth right now because a lot of our fathers are not productive. So there is nobody they are looking up to. When they aspire, their parents are the first people to pull them down. And that is why where you sleep, who you talk to matters. If you spend time with people that are hungry, that are angry, that are lying, one day you will be a thief. But if you spend time with people who are progressive in their thinking, people who are ambitious, my brother, even if you are not there yet, but that association has a way of gingering you to the next level. I did not aspire that I was going to be successful. I just wanted to be in the presence of positive values and positive thinking. Before I knew what was happening, my brain, my genes, my chromosomes, every part of my body was looking for upward. By the time I had a thousand staff, I did not know. Mm. I did not know. It wasn't in the agenda. I just wanted to be able to pay f bills for my house, you know, to be able to pay my school fees, I mean, for the children. So every day, mm -hmm. what I do to myself, my success habit is I stay on YouTube. I listen to people that are challenging themselves, mm. what they do, how they do it. And I take a journal and I write those points down every single day, one hour a day in the morning and in the night. I always advise people, do it in the morning or do it in the night because once it enters your mind, your, your conscious mind, then it flows into your subconscious. Once it enters your subconscious, it's good for you because you will be reacting based on what has tampered him. If you give a rich man, how you know somebody's rich or poor is simple. Give two people a 300 Ghana city. And give on the, the rich uh, uh, two people 200, 300 Ghana cedis. Yes, you will know who is rich and who is poor from their from their behavior. A poor man will first go to market and buy food 300 Ghana cedis. Buy food in the house, yams, potatoes, everything. He will come back. That's a poor man's thinking. A rich man will not do that. A rich man will carry 150 Ghana cedis. Go and buy food for the house. But 150 Ghana cedis, he will look for opportunities to be able to network with people and exchange cards so that you can continue the chain of relationship. Yeah. Get a complimentary card, you know. Go to where the people who are talking the language he wants to and get there, sit with them, exchange complimentary card, request to meet with them in two days or three days time and then connect the dots. Come back, who is this person? What does he do for a living? What can I provide for him? He studies. It's called competitive intelligence. Mm -hmm. You look at the person then what is it? Go to Google. After God, it's Google. Yes. Go and find out who the person is. Which company does he work in? What does he do? What do they need? What are their projects and what can you do for them? By the next time you are seeing him, you are not going on the first day to tell them mm -hmm. that, um, Charlie, we want to do business with you. No, you first create, yes, yes right. create a relationship. And when you create the relationship first time, so he will be the one to ask you, Charlie, um, you, what do you say you do? Exactly. Then from there, you have connected the mm -hmm. dots. Uh, stop being in a hurry to make money. I like that. I like that. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I want to touch on one thing, okay? So mm -hmm. I picked a few things from what you said. Yeah. Um, at a point, you wanted to get into a particular field, of course, with your passion, but then the society expected something else from you. Yeah. Now, we are all Africans, and mm. one of the things that I've realized is the fact that even parents mm. or the society want you to get a white-collar job mm. to be successful. Do you think this has been one of the issues we faced so far as Africans? I, it, 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 let's put it like this. We don't have white-collar jobs out here anymore. Okay. And I'll say that in context. And I'll come from a Nigerian, then come to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Nigeria currently now, the number of children that are born every day, currently, as of today, is 25,686 children per day. Per day. per day. Like recharge card, buy one, get for free. Wow. So people, when they give birth to children, you'll be hearing their name in the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, public holiday. <laughs> <laughs> now, so if... Somebody wakes up, you know, and because some people do this because they want their children to be to to, to feed them yeah. in future. True. Yes. That's your investment. Your children yes. are your investment out here. That is wrong thinking. Mm. Now I believe that if a man cannot take care of his children, it's not what to be called a father. It is the responsibility of fathers to provide for the house. I'm not a believer that women 
should go and work and make money. That's me personally. I believe it is the man's responsibility to provide. Well, if sure. the woman makes money, it is her money. But if a man makes money, it is our money. Mm -hmm. Our money. I'm sure some women are excited. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's our money when a man makes it. Yes. Yeah. Now, so for me, I now look at it like this. Because a lot of people, everybody that came to this world has something, talent. Children are God's gift. Mm. I look at myself that before I came to this world, there was a problem which I am mandated to come and solve. Mm. I have a period of time to prepare to solve it. It is important I understand my purpose, mm. I understand my field, and then go out there and do it. Now, when you said about children wanting to do something their parents wanted to do, I wanted to be an architect. I wanted to be an aeronautic engineer. That was my aspiration. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately for me, um, when I lost my father, I, became, I was emotionally attached. Mm -hmm. So my mom and I were not very good friends. My father was killed. Sorry. Yes. So till today, I cannot watch a film that a man dies and leaves his children. I cannot watch it. It's a part of me that mm -hmm. I know that has been tampered with. So that was what drew me to security, to protect another man from losing mm. his own things or his own children. Now, it is one thing for you to have an interest in something. It is another thing for you to develop yourself mm. in it. So I began to read magazines on security. And I read magazines. I read and read and read until I left red. Wow. I read magazines back to back. If I see any magazine on security, if I see any magazine on this industry, I will study it. I will study it. I will commit myself. I will write all over, ask questions from it. So I now got back editions. I will sit down. I didn't have time to play with the boys. I had lost time already. I needed to be productive. Hunger is a gift of God to man because I needed to eat. So when you feed me, you stop me from thinking. But this hunger was helping me. You need to find out how to make this thing yeah. work. Otherwise, nothing will work in your life. So I wanted to read it and find out, okay, how do I provide services and co. So I did not know that I was expanding myself the more. So when opportunities were passing by, and opportunities are always there. It's only that trained eyes are the ones that see where the opportunities are. So if you don't train yourself, prepare yourself, you will never, never see it. So that's what happened. I got into security, kept reading it and going on. So as, as security became my own passion, I was working at yeah. it and, and growing it. It was sucking me in, sucking me in, sucking me in. So I started providing it for free in a church for three years. I just wanted to prove to myself that I was productive. So I worked in the church for three years without salary. The more you, whatever you feed yourself, the books you eat, you read, you eat, will eventually eat you up. Mm. So that grew me into this industry and I was finding out. So when people saw that I was good in my field, they started giving me opportunities to work for them. I never applied. Yeah. So once somebody sees I was good, and I tell people that money is just a reward system. Mm -hmm. Money responds to you solving a problem. If you solve a problem, the reward is money. Yeah. So when I was solving problems for people, they were now started paying me. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I started you making, probably. yes, from people that yeah. I didn't have to small, small things. Then I grew it into it until I became what I am today. Dr. Ken, what role do you think vision play in our life? Hi, 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 hi. Vision is the drive. Vision is, where, is what takes you to where you're going to be. Like now, my vision is to be able to turn 50 million youth into entrepreneurs so that they can employ five, five people. The problem with Africa is, like you said, no white collar jobs. Where would you get white collar jobs when there are no vision? This is my thing, right? I feel like when it comes to our economy, mm. not even just the financial economy, mm. but our so let's say mental, mental economy, economy. Mental conscious economy, economy. Right? Conscious yeah. economy. Mm. We, especially in Ghana, I haven't been to Nigeria in years, yeah. but I know in Ghana our, our economy isn't driven by need to solve problems. Mm -hmm. It's, well, like, I need points. money. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, like, I need money. Like, how many times do you see a taxi driver saying, do you want to go somewhere? Mm -hmm. You just got out of, an, uh, of a truck drop. Mm -hmm. He's asking if you want to go somewhere. He sees you waiting for your Uber. Mm -hmm. Asking you, you want to go somewhere. Somebody who is selling gum or sometimes even skipping rope on the road mm -hmm. is offering you something. 
not because you need it, mm. but because they want to give your you. money. No. See, first of all, if you look at it, you said something which is very, very critical, that's mental economy. Now, you cannot grow more than your mental economy. You can never go there. So if the opportunities are that high and your mental economy is that low, no matter how you try, you cannot grow past your mental economy. If we're going to grow past, if we're going to achieve everything here, we need to grow our mental economy deliberately. Mm. What are the pillars one should stand on? The first pillar is the pillar of crabology. Mm. Crabology is the study of crabs. If you put a crab inside a basket, one crab, come back in 10 minutes, that crab will come out. But if you want to keep that crab there, put other crabs. Mm. So the law of crabology is that if one crab wants to go out, other crabs will pull him yeah. down. Now, so if you want to change your future, change your friends, your friends determine your values. Your values determine your decisions. Your decisions determine your actions, and your actions determine your results. If your results are bad, check your actions. If your actions are not the best, check your decisions. If your decisions are not the best, then check your values. If your values are not right, then check your relationships. If you can change your relationships, you can change your future. Simple. And your friends do not only include the people you talk to, what you listen, who you listen to, your father, your mother, your the books, the Instagram pages to go, those are your friends, they affect you. That's number one. The second one is the law of compartmentalization. Compartmentalization is the law of compartment. In primary school, they taught us addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Anytime I meet anybody, I compartmentalize you. Now, if I see you and you say, King, I like you, you're good, I put you in, in addition compartment. Now, if I come to you and say, you don't like me, you don't like my hair, you don't like the way I talk, I put you in subtraction compartment. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come to me and tell me, look, we're just in, I say, look, King, we can make some opportunity there, and the money, things can go, or you can get me to, I say, I'll put you in multiplication department. Now, but if I give you money, you don't return it, I give you my shoe, you tear it, I give you my car, you spoil it, I put you quickly in division compartment. Now, if you enter into my subtraction or division compartment, my brother, I don't have any business with you, even if you are my family. Success is not emotional. As one of Ubon King ambassadors, wow. because this particular thing that we have done here will definitely affect more people than I can ever imagine. Somebody, I've seen it happen many times, that somebody hears on radio, it kicks something in him and tells me two years later. So for giving me the opportunity to be here, I don't take it for granted. And um, I will definitely send our pins to you guys. But this one, I want to say thank you for the opportunity. Africa is in need of people like you who will connect people together and make it happen. So please allow me. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You can fit it anywhere later. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I want to say thank you for the platform. And uh, yes, anytime, anywhere in the world, anybody of Bunking Foundation sees you with that, they know what it means. That is direct. Yeah, yeah.